Today on Applied Science, I'd like to talk about this, a ballpoint pen into which I've built a radio and a bone conduction speaker, so that when I bite down on the speaker part of the pen, I can hear the audio from the radio, like this. Also, I'd like to let you know that I signed up with Patreon.com, and this will allow you to uh, make donations to my channel on a per-video basis. So I'll probably do a Q&A session later and uh, answer more of your questions about that, but feel free to check out the link in the description to donate. As the name implies, bone conduction means that the sound waves originate at the speaker here, and instead of traveling through the air into your ear, they actually travel through the skull into the cochlea, the part of the ear that, um, that senses sound. So since I can't reach through the computer and put this up to your skull, the next best thing in order to demonstrate it is to push the uh, bone conduction speaker up against the camera's microphone. And when I was just demonstrating this thing, I was only holding the bone conduction speaker about a centimeter away from the microphone when it was off and was in contact when the sound was on. And as you probably heard, the difference is actually quite significant. I built this bone conduction speaker by taking a piezo transducer disc like this and cutting it into a strip and then putting the strip into the back part of this ballpoint pen, the button of the ballpoint pen, and encasing it in epoxy. So I basically put the strip in here and then filled this up with two-part epoxy and let it cure. And that's, that's how this one is built too, the one that I was demonstrating. I cheated a little bit, and since I haven't actually built all these elements into the pen, but they're all functional, and what you heard was actually the, the system working. However, the other parts of this system are a, a tiny FM radio, a couple of batteries, and an impedance matching transformer to convert the headphone output of this tiny FM radio to a much higher impedance that can drive the piezo transducer. This kind of shows how dated I am. Uh, when I first thought about this project, I instantly thought about these tiny FM radio chips. The entire radio is essentially one IC with some you know, supporting components and an amplifier for the headphones. Of course, um, I was thinking of actually doing this project as kind of a side business, or at least thinking about it in terms of a product, and what would make a whole lot more sense is to start with a Bluetooth earphone and build this into the pen so that uh, when you pair it with a cell phone in your pocket, for example, you could um, you know, feel the phone ring and then maybe press a button on the pen to answer the call and then hold this up to your tooth and actually have sort of a covert listening situation in you know, about a $20 product. After thinking about use cases for this thing, it seemed like the killer app would basically be cheating on tests. You know, you're already holding a pen and no one would be suspicious if you were absentmindedly chewing on the back of the pen and yet you could have like a, you know, a pretty good audio stream going right into your ears. Um, anyway, I decided to pass on this business idea, which is uh, why I'm making a video about it now. In the usual course of researching a business idea, you try to find products that are similar, or maybe even the same as the idea that uh, you're currently considering. So I searched around for bone conduction pens or earphones or anything like that that would be um, have covert listening in mind, and I couldn't find anything, but my friend Travis did. He remembered this thing that came out quite a while ago, I guess when Toy Story 2 came out, and it's a lollipop that uses bone conduction, and when you press one of these buttons, it um, emits a sound effect and if, you're, if the lollipop is in your mouth or you're hitting one of your teeth, you get this kind of bone conduction effect where it wires the sound kind of right into your ear. Um, so, of course, eBay has these, and so I bought one or two because they were pretty cheap and took one apart. And these guys uh, did not use a piezo element. It's actually a standard uh, magnet and coil driven speaker element and they've kind of added some structural stuff to it so that uh, when you jam a lollipop in here and you push on it it doesn't break the speaker like it basically has um, some molded plastic limits in here so that even with the lollipop in here and you biting on it as hard as you can it's not likely you're going to break the speaker element but this raises an interesting point um, why they chose to go with um, a speaker, you know, a conventional coil and magnet type actuator instead of piezo. And I mentioned um, impedance matching is, is critical for this thing, and I showed this little impedance match transformer. So I, I hit upon uh, impedance matching in my last video, and when you have a small battery powered device like this, it's not easy to generate a high voltage. 
uh, you know, this one only has two button cells, so this is limited to three volts here. And uh, the if you put three volts across one of these piezo elements, it doesn't do very much. It's not going to move very far. So what this transformer does is takes the low voltage drive that would normally be sufficient for a coil and magnet type actuator and steps up the voltage and steps down the current so that it matches better with the high impedance required by the piezo element. And I searched for the, the highest ratio, smallest matching transformer that I could find on DigiKey. And this is almost good enough. It's kind of a little bit too big for a pen body, but to demonstrate the effect, it was fine. You can think of these piezo transducers as sort of an electrically leaky capacitor. So normally a perfect capacitor will accept energy from your circuit, and then you can pull that same amount of energy back out if everything is perfect. But these transducers actually can do work. So if you put a certain amount of energy in there, you may not get the same energy back out, even though it functions like a capacitor. That energy is actually leaving the system in the form of um, sound pressure waves. This means that at DC, their impedance is essentially infinite. So if we just put voltage across this piezo element and hold it there, nothing, nothing will happen. It basically just functions like a regular capacitor. But if we feed it a, an alternating voltage, then the thing expands and contracts, and that's when we can get this energy loss to happen, or this energy transfer, where the electrical energy is converted into mechanical work. Typically, the voltages have to be quite high to make this thing do anything useful, though. So in this case, uh, the little impedance matching transformer that I was using was accepting something on the order of three volts, you know, a couple volts from that tiny battery powered circuit and outputting something in the range of 20 to 50 volts. However, these piezo transducers are generally built to handle something in the hundreds of volts range. So the more voltage, that means the more this little transducer is going to expand or contract, and that means we get higher amplitude sound out of it. I actually didn't notice this until a minute ago, but the manufacturer claims they're in the Guinness Book of World Records for world's most interactive candy of 1999. I can only imagine what the competitors to that title had for their products. Another one of my friends had the idea of building this uh, bone conduction system into a camelback mouthpiece. So if you're out hiking or surfing or skiing or whatever, it's not very convenient to have headphones on because uh, you know the environment is just not very uh, good for that. Uh, if you had it in the mouthpiece of this water backpack, you could very easily answer a call if you had a you know a waterproof phone, I guess, and bite down on it and sort of hear through that. It might be an easier way to um, to have a call in that sort of environment. I thought that was one application that was probably better than cheating on tests, but beyond that, I really couldn't come up with much else. So let me know what you think. Do you have a killer app for this tech? Okay, see you next time. Bye.